Every time you send a message, stream a video, panic Google that symptom because you think you're gonna die or something, you're tapping into one of humanity's greatest achievements, the internet. I'm high C and Williams, and by the end of this video, you'll finally understand what's happening every time you hit refresh on your screen. Let's get started. What happens if disaster strikes and communication fails? Let's flash back to the 1960s. During that time, the Cold War was going on, and people were worried about what would happen if a crisis knocked down telephone lines. Could there be a system that didn't completely collapse if one part went down? Enter ARPANET. It was the earliest version of the internet. It was clunky, experimental, and it connected exactly four computers. But it worked, and it changed everything. ARPANET wasn't just a technical win, it was proof that collaboration really does fuel innovation. Scientists, researchers, and engineers are working together to create something bigger, a network where computers could communicate across vast distances, no borders, no single point of failure, just pure seamless connection. And by the 1980s, ARPANET evolved. It laid the foundation for a modern internet where information could move freely, no matter what the distance. And today, that tiny four computer experiment has transformed into a global force that powers nearly everything, like your banking app, all the way down to this weirdly specific video recommendation YouTube gave you. Okay, so how does this magical network actually function? Let's break it down. I'll also break down my breakdown after I break it down. Let's get one thing straight. The internet is not just floating in the air. It's very much physical. It's a lot of fiber optic cables stretching across our major oceans, literally across the entire Atlantic, sharing data between continents at nearly light speed. And there's massive data centers that support those that have servers that store everything from social media posts to entire websites. That Wi-Fi routing in your house is just the last step to a much bigger system that connects you to the world. When you type a website address into your browser, your device doesn't just automatically know where to go. It has to ask for directions, basically, kind of like mailing a letter. But instead of an address like um, 123 Main Street, Websites use unique numbers called IP addresses, but since no one wants to memorize a bunch of, you know, random numbers, we use domain names like Google.com, <laughs> which gets translated into IP addresses by a system called DNS or a domain name system. And now that your request knows where to go, it actually has to travel there, but how? through your internet service provider, or ISP for short, which acts like a post office for the internet. Your request moves through a mix of fiber optic cables, satellites, data centers until it reaches the website server, which is a powerful computer that stores all the information you're requesting. Your server processes that request, then sends that data back to you the same way it came in. All that has happened right before your eyes in milliseconds. But wait, how does that data move so fast without getting lost? That's thanks to something called packet switching, which instead of sending all your data at once, the internet breaks it into tiny packets. Each of those packets takes the fastest route. They're all going different ways. The fastest route available, they'll all arrive and they'll be reassembled in the correct order. That way, even if one path is blocked, your data can find another way to reach you. It's like using ways. <laughs> Just like that, your meme, your email, that TikTok that you were sent, reaches you in record time. Now, if this all makes sense, Great, I, I hope I explained it well. But let's answer some of the frequently asked questions about the internet. And I used to work in a Best Buy. Th these are real questions <laughs> that were asked. Is the internet inside my computer? It's no. Your computer is just a doorway to the internet. The actual internet is made up of servers and cables all over the world. And when you load a website, you're reaching out to those servers, not pulling the information in front of your actual machine. So what does an ISP actually do? They can give you an internet service provider like a post office for the web. It takes your request, finds the right destination, and delivers it back to you. And then, if I have a wireless Wi-Fi router, then what is up with these cables? So your Wi-Fi is only wireless in your house. It still connects to the internet through those fiber optic cables underground. That's why you have uh, an installer come through digging holes in your yard to connect you to the internet. Your router sends that data through the air to your devices, but the internet itself is still a massive wired network. Then why does my internet sometimes slow down? Have you ever been stuck in traffic? <laughs> That's about the best way to put it. Basically what happens when too many people use the same internet connection at once, the more data flowing through, the more crowded the road gets. So it slows everything down. And then there's a question of how does my phone connect online when I'm just like walking around outside? Your mobile data 
connects to cell towers rather than Wi-Fi routers. It's like powerful Wi-Fi routers outside for your phone. <laughs> These towers act like relay stations that also just sends your requests from your phone into the internet and in all of its intricacies just like your Wi-Fi router does. And so to recap this section, the internet is a global network made of physical cables, satellites, and servers. Your device sends the request through your ISP, which finds the right server. And then the data travels back to you through packet switching, and then boom, your website loads in an instant. All that just happened in two seconds right in front of your face. Well, next time you're scrolling, streaming, sending your on my way text, even though you're just about to hop in the shower, remember that you're tapping into one of mankind's greatest creation. And if you're curious about more internet mysteries, like what the cloud actually is, Subscribe, stick around, video coming soon. But the internet isn't just about convenience. It's changed the world in ways we're still trying to fully understand. It's leveled the playing field for businesses, education, global communication, and it's given a voice to the unheard, sparked movements, and it's made knowledge available everywhere. That also comes with challenges. There's energy consumption. These data centers I mentioned, they use a staggering amount of electricity. And the question is, how do we make the internet actually sustainable? We're having to address the same thing with AI right now. And then there is miscommunication and echo chambers. Algorithms often show us what we want to see, not what we need to see. More on that later. <laughs> Security risk, everything we click leaves a digital footprint. So as we share more online information, protecting your personal data has become more and more important. And no, I'm not about to segue into a ad about data protection. And let's not forget that the internet can actually be fragile. It's cables and wires and things floating in the sky. A single severed undersea cable can disrupt an entire region's connection. Cyber attacks can take down massive networks in seconds. And the internet still isn't even finished. We're still shaping it. And so how do we make it better? We work on that sustainability. Tech companies are exploring ways to power the internet more efficiently from green data centers to renewable energy resources. We need more digital literacy. We need to teach people how to navigate the internet responsibly. Fact checking, privacy awareness, and, uh, and avoiding scams. I feel like that's the one that gets everyone the most, but we just have to help create a more informed society. And then access for all. Billions of people still don't have reliable internet, believe it or not. Expanding infrastructure to ensure that more people can benefit from what the internet has offered would be ideal. Most important, we have to remember that the internet was built on collaboration. It's, it's not about competition. It's not about fighting online. It's about connection. The internet is more than just cables and code. It's a real mirror, a real reflection of the human, of mankind, but also mankind's potential. It can unite or divide. It can empower or exploit. The difference is how we choose to use the internet. The internet is the one of the most powerful tools that mankind has ever created. And the future of it is totally up to us. Until next time, peace.